immersive entertainment and media studio Mant VR announced a partnership with IndyCar earlier this week. All right, guys, immersive entertainment and media studio Mant VR announced a partnership with IndyCar earlier this week to deliver content surrounding its 2018 racing season in, get this, virtual reality. Our own Alyssa Smith is live at Cheddar's studio at the Bungalow in Santa Monica with the company's founder and CEO, Neil Mant. Alyssa, what's the latest? Thank you so much, Tim. Yes, as you mentioned, I'm here with Neil Mant, founder and CEO of Mant VR. Neil, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so before we jump into the partnerships that they were just talking about, there's a lot of big things happening with AR, especially with Apple, Google. Break it down for us right now. Okay, so a couple of months ago, uh, Apple announced that they're going to have basically what's called an open source AR kit mm -hmm. built natively into their phone. And it's not 100% clear how it's going to play, but we're going to find out in a couple of weeks when they come to market with the phone. Right. Next and week. It, yeah, next week, right. So essentially, we think it's going to be as simple as you just open the camera button or you hit an app button and it'll open the, the, the pass-through camera. And then you just start pointing at things and then they'll start talking to you. So just that's AR? That'll be it. So okay. they So they announced this and that means that every brand in the world that thinks Apple is a real thing, which is everybody, right. will start programming content on the back side of this. So I'll be able to point at the Arm & Hammer logo, oh. or at the Shell logo, or mm -hmm. at the, the emblem on the Mercedes-Benz, and it will start talking to you and offering you discounts and ways of engaging. And how is that different from what Samsung's doing? Well, Android just announced last week their response to this, which is called AR Core. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, basically an extension of what they did with Tango on the, Leno the Lenovo phone. And that mm -hmm. was an exclusive product for a while there. But now it's going to be across all Android phones. So over the next year, year and a half, people are going to start learning to scan things. Okay. This will be similar to the process they went through with the App Store. Oh, there's an app for something. I can go to the App Store and I learn. So you learn to scan. And then right about two years, when it becomes totally ubiquitous, that's when the eyewear should hit the market. The eyewear. I believe Apple will probably call it eyewear. Eyewear. Okay, let's talk about where you fit into the mix sure. and how you're working on VR, AR, and 360. Yep. So uh, my background is as a traditional producer. Mm -hmm. I've made uh, about 3,000 episodes of television and a half a dozen movies for studios and networks, uh, about 20 networks. Shows like Jim Rome is Burning is a show my brother and I created. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Destination Truth on Sci-Fi, and we did a movie for Disney called Million Dollar Arm. And so a few years ago, I felt sort of the core part of my business was about to take a big hit. And I'd say I'll go back about three years now. And it, I couldn't put a finger on it. It felt like what, what had happened to publishing or in maybe the music business, mm -hmm. but just something big. And so I decided to shift the company into an immersive media company, which is VR, AR, and AI. And about six months after that, the data started coming out about cord cutting. And, well, we all know now there's a lot of difficulty happening in television. Right. So we began initially in VR, and we focused on content that could be pay played across all mobile phones because okay. you don't have the goggles. And I was talking to the crew mm -hmm. here. No one here has the goggles. We don't have the goggles. So what, what we really need for the VR world to really be mainstream is for eyewear to happen. And the AR business will drive the, the miniature, miniaturization of goggles into glasses. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, all content should be made if you want to hit the masses on a mobile phone. So we Okay, so short term. Short term is going to be AR. Long term. Long term is going to be VR and AR. And the VR in the short term is 360 VR, stuff okay. that plays on a mobile phone. So we settled in on podcasting. Let's talk about your partnership with Podcast One. Yep. Okay, so you basically decided to bring these experiences to all of Podcast One's podcasts. And when you think of podcasts, you don't really think of visuals or any sort of, yeah. you know, imagery content so why did you decide to do this partnership and how are people responding to being able to really be immersed with their favorite podcasters yeah. well look any business that i approach it's a long game it's okay. not like how do i get something this weekend or next week podcasting is is exploding mm -hmm. right it's doubling this year from what it was last year didn't even exist really a decade ago so i see huge potential there mm -hmm. um and as far as video being a part of it well video is just more engaging than audio it just is as a matter of fact and i'm not going to force everybody to watch my podcast <laughs> i think it's a percentage of the population who listen who will want to watch it mm -hmm. and they'll consume it on the mobile phone just where they're listening mm -hmm. to it but over time again a year from now two years from now when glasses become smaller then you can be in the room with adam carolla and you'll be able to communicate directly with him live and i think there's an audience who will want to do that Definitely. I mean, I would want to do that. 
Okay, we got to talk about one of your other partnerships that uh, they teased about when they're introducing you, the IndyCar experience that's in yep. VR. Tell us about this partnership and why and like what type of content specifically are you offering with this deal? Yeah. So my partner Gordon Whitener and I are, mm -hmm. have always had a long relationship in the sports world. Yeah. And IndyCar is an unbelievable brand. Uh, it is uh, getting a, a younger audience every day mm -hmm. uh, who are more and more engaged with the product. And so this is a, a perfect partnership for a VR play. Because one of the difficulties with VR, especially from a sports perspective, is distance to the subject. Mm -hmm. If you get too far away from that subject, in the goggles, it's not great. On a mobile phone, it's even worse because it's too small. But in the case of IndyCar, we can have the camera within inches of the athlete. So it's a very unique opportunity to really be in the action. And so we started making some content for them uh, earlier this year, and now we formalized it into a long-term partnership, and we're going to be making AR and VR with them all next year. And definitely, as you mentioned, that's helping them get a younger audience as well. And what kind of events will you be covering for them? Well, we're going to be doing the race up in Sonoma uh, mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, which is a very cool track. Mm -hmm. It's a road track. And, um, and we'll be doing other races next year, mm -hmm. and it'll be a combination of taped pieces and eventually some live pieces mm -hmm. and really working with them to... Uh, help strategically grow that immersive media brand mm -hmm. that they are excited to be a part of. You talked, to, you mentioned about sports and the importance of you know being immersive with sports. I know you've done a lot of work with the Steelers amongst a lot of other sports teams. What do you think? You know, why do you think they work well together, AR and VR and sports? And what do you think the future of the two industries are together? Well, AR again is a right now thing because right. it's a mobile phone. I was meeting with somebody recently, and I said to them, I said. How valuable is it for you to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your customer, mm -hmm. to, with the actual fan? And they said, well, that would be great to have the one-on-one -on -one relationship. Yeah. And I say, you know, in your uh, stadium or your arena, you may know a couple of hundred fans. And, and you probably say, well, that's crazy. They have uh, people who have season tickets, so they have to know more people. And I said, no, because if I'm a season ticket holder and I give my ticket to somebody else, then you don't know that I'm in the stadium. Right. But if you see my cell phone you know I'm in the stadium and you can target with me directly if you have that relationship. And so AR, by looking at the ticket, getting content, walking in, scanning the building, seeing the Hall of Fame, seeing something at half court during a game, all of that kind of interactivity will make the fan want to engage with that team and give up their cell phone number, their email address, so you can have that direct one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that's a right now thing. Okay, lastly, before I let you go, you are Emmy Award winning TV film producer. You have a long, long, you know, history in this industry. Where do you think the view, the future is in the long game with VR when it comes to storytelling? Well, it's interesting. Uh, VR now, I tell people it's a luxury item. It's mm -hmm. something that if you can afford it, if it makes sense in your roadmap, you get it because it is very powerful. Long term, I see in the storytelling, similar on the film side, it's going to be for the biggest of the biggest. You're going to see the James Camerons, the Steven Spielbergs, the David Finchers. They're the ones, Darren Aronofsky's, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are going to make these amazing immersive experiences that are going to be two hours long, 90 mm -hmm. minutes long, that we'll want to be in. And future filmmakers we don't know about, but I don't think it's going to be something that the masses are going to do. Mm -hmm. I think just like a big 3D epic movie, the 3D epic VR will be only for the biggest of the big. Well, Neil Mant, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. We're going to go back over to you guys at the Stock Exchange in New York. Thanks so much, Alyssa. That was our own Alyssa Smith with Mant VR founder and CEO Neil Mant live from the Cheddar Studios at the Bungalow in Santa Monica. Thanks, Alyssa. All right, guys, immersive entertainment and media studio Mant VR announced a partnership with IndyCar earlier this week to deliver